Oops. <laughs> I walked into this. You know what? I'm going to leave this in the video because this really happened and it's there. So uh, uh, the previous video I made, um, we looked at, I just looked at the really, really the basics of the control structure of the loop. A while loop, a for loop, for loop being the sort of primary looping structure that I'm going to use for the rest of the examples. And all I did was something very basic. Use it to draw a repeating shape. And now it's up to you to figure out uh, what kinds of creative things you can try to experiment with to create different new kinds of patterns that you haven't explored before. But I think there are two key uh, elements that I would like to discuss um, that, I, that I think will fill in a couple gaps in your, in, in your knowledge here that will help you uh, do more stuff with loops. So the first thing that I want to mention is, you know, we, I started talking about loops as if this is this new thing. But there actually is this draw function. And the, one of the very first things I looked at in an earlier video is this draw function is looping. And every time you get to the end of the draw function, the screen is updated, then the draw function repeats, stuff is drawn again, screen is updated. So sometimes it gets a little bit confusing here. If you have this loop, like there's this for loop that, that, we, that I just created in the previous example, which is inside the draw loop. This is all like comes back together because this, this video is all about nested loops because this is really a nested loop. Draw is looping, the for loop is looping. But right, the goal of this loop was to do what? It was to draw multiple shapes, repeat the same ellipse function over and over and over again. However, if you were, if you're thinking about this kind of in almost too much detail, you might have noticed it's, while this loop is going, it's not like you see like the first ellipse, then you see the second one, then you see the third one, then you see the, the fourth one. You just see them all. You might also think to yourself, okay, well, it's drawing them one at a time, but it happens so fast, it looks like it's just all of them. So I would like to remind you that neither of those things is the case. In fact, the window, the canvas, is not updated until the end of draw is reached. So the purpose of a for loop inside the draw loop is not to animate something, but rather to draw a whole bunch of things for each cycle of the draw loop. If you want to animate things, you would have to do something slightly different. So let's take a look in this particular example. So I'm going to draw these back in the middle, these circles. So the circles are just there. I'm seeing all of them. Nothing is changing. I could do a couple things. One, I could add random for the blue value of the color. And now we can see that. Can you see that? Whoa. Yeah, that's really like the worst. Uh, let me make this random too. <laughs> because you can barely see that. Now you can see that more, right? So you can see that draw is looping over and over again, and the only thing that's changing is that the color is changing. The location of these ellipses from that loop are staying the same. I could do something kind of strange, and I could say, let me add a variable like offset, and I could say draw every ellipse at the x. x is part of this loop. Oh my goodness, I'm flickering like crazy. This camera is having problems. But hopefully you're going to be able to get through this video anyway. Um, the x, uh, x is the same every time through, uh, x is the same ah, every time through draw because x is what's, ah, this is making me crazy, governing the location of those circles. But if I were to say offset equals offset plus one, now you can see I'm offsetting the location of all of those by some amount. So this, this may, this is, these are kind of like a few sort of strange quick things that I've added here, but the point of what I wanted to make is you just need to keep that in mind, right? This draw loop is for the purpose of refreshing that flip book metaphor I think works well, or analogy, someone will correct me. Um, the, uh, the flip book idea, right? You're, you've got a page and then a next page and a next page and a next page. There's no flip book here. This is in order to perform a repeating task on a single page in the flip book for animation. So that's the first thing that I wanted to note. The other thing that comes up very often is kind of related to this because what happens if now inside this loop I put another loop? for every x, do something to every y. And let's think about how that might be useful. And this is a kind of algorithm or process that comes up over and over again and again in any sort of computer graphics programming and other kinds of programming as well. Why? Because the canvas, the thing that we're drawing to, is a two-dimensional grid. It has pixels along an x-axis and it has pixels along a y-axis. So if I would like to draw something for every x 
fill in all the y's. So for the first x, do all the y's. For the next x, do all the y's. Now for the next x, do all the y's. The way that that works is to say for var x equals 0, the rest of the for loop, and then for every x, assuming this x is going up, every time you do an x, also do a y. So this is a little tricky to get used to, but it's incredibly powerful and will, will open up a lot of possibilities. You know, you want to uh, program a game that involves a two-dimensional board of cells, uh, like chess or checkers, you're going to need some sort of structure like this. If you want to learn about image processing, how do you read every pixel of an image and make that pixel a little brighter, a little darker, or apply some other kind of effect, you're going to need this kind of loop. So it comes up over and over again in so many things. So let's look at that apply into code, and I'm still here, hopefully I won't flicker and disappear too much. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to uh, save this project as, uh, I'm saving these because someday I will upload them somewhere, I suppose. Um, I am going to uh, remove this weird offset thing. Uh, I'll keep the random fill, why not? Uh, we don't need this offset. And what I want to do is add right here another loop for y equals 0, y is less than or equal to height, y goes up by 50, and draw the ellipse at x comma y. So all I did is, now this is the, exactly what we're talking about. For every x, do every y. So the first x, do all the y's. The next x, do all the y's. And let's see if this works. Whoa. It did. So now we have this perfect grid of circles flashing random colors all over the window. You know, how could you make those colors not random? How might you have, like, apply some sort of pattern to it? How might you do all sorts of interesting things, like have those circles start to shake a little bit? That's a little bit more complicated. We're going to need some other tools and objects and arrays for a bit more. But you can start to think about all of these uh, possibilities. And I just want to point out that, again, if I were to take this loop and I did this sort of backwards. I don't know why I'm showing you this, because it works so nicely. But if I were to not do it this way, right? if I were to do this, two loops, right? this is what I've got with two separate loops. I'm doing all the x's along the y column 200, and now I'm doing all the y's along the x, sorry, along the y row 200. Now I'm doing all the y's in the x column 200. So I, I, I don't know, I had this in my mind, I was going to show you this first, and so now I'm like showing you this after, which really doesn't make a lot of sense. But I'm just like letting this video fly with all of its uh, weirdness and errors. So let me go back to what it was correctly. That was sort of like pointless. Um, could take that out, and we could. I think this is a nicer place to end looking at this again. So well, I've talked now about really very little, but kind of giving you a running start here into thinking about loops. A loop is something to repeat a certain task during one cycle of draw. I mean, you can use a loop anywhere, but right now I'm using it to draw multiple copies of a shape inside of draw. Um, you can also uh, use a nested loop to see a grid. If Draw, remember, is the flip book. So each time through draw, if you change some aspect of the loop, you know, I, I just thought of something really interesting that we could try. Like, for example, everything can be a variable right here. The x loop stops at width. What if I were to put mouse x here? So I would just want to dynamically loop up to where the mouse is. So now this loop, remember, is executing every single time, but the exit condition is changing every time through draw. And you're still watching. This was a little nugget here that's, that's hopefully useful. OK, so that gives you the basics about loops, how loop works within draw, how you have a nested loop. And I need to make one more video, which won't happen today, because I now have to go do something else. But I want to look at an array uh, and how loop uh, relates to that. OK, thank you, and goodbye. Oh, this is where I need to click.